Arsenal are now a point clear of Liverpool, two points clear of Manchester City, with those two, of course, playing tomorrow. Cannot wait for that one. Let's take you back to North London, our commentary team. We had to rush away from Graham Lasso and Peter Drury. Well, gentlemen, so much last season was about Arsenal's character and how it faded a bit about this time last year. Well, in that second half, you had character from Havertz, you had character from Ramsdale. Looks like that's what they've got this season. Yeah, and, and I think, I don't know what you think, Graham, but those kind of individual cameos or parts in this drama somehow illustrate the wider story too. <laughs> Ramsdale in particular today, he's an obvious one to pounce upon, but the love he was shown at the end mm. there, that kind of redemptive story, that refusal to be denied the win that they were obliged to get said something about where Arsenal are mentally now. Yeah, I and mean, it's about the group. It has to always be about the group. During a long, hard season, now you've got five substitutions as well. There seems to be a lot of injuries around. So keeping everyone as a group together so that when you're used, and Ramsdale in this case has come in, you've got to make them feel as special as and as valuable as, as the first choice in any position. And that's how you manage your squad. Obviously, the disappointment of, of giving the goal away in the, f in the first half with the mistake, but goalkeepers are encouraged to play out from the back now, so you've got to manage that risk, and occasionally it's going to happen. So it's not, it, it, it can't be a devastating blow. And he responded personally brilliantly in the second half, as his teammates did, to continue just driving and pushing themselves to the limit, trying to break it down a very stubborn, almost effective Brentford team who, who did a great job at making a real game of this. So let's throw it forward. How does this impact on the big game tomorrow? They'll have all been sat in their hotel rooms, willing Arsenal not to get the <laughs> win, and they did. You know, that just piles it on, doesn't it? Yeah, I think there's a point where you, you don't look at the teams around you. There's, there's a point when you do. I think we're still too far away from that point at the moment. There's so much business for all these teams to do between now and the end of the season. So, of course, they'll keep an eye on it, but it's not defining at, at all. It really is about... You know, Arsenal have to keep their nerve a little bit. I, I still feel they've got this bit of emotion in them that they need. If they can just lose that, control it a bit, little bit better, that set them into a better um, running. I think you know they're going to be really able to enjoy the match tomorrow because they've picked up their three points and it gives them a slight advantage. Absolutely. So well, <laughs> as we say, Rebecca, tomorrow is always in the context of today, and today wasn't bad. I think you said you still weren't convinced about Kai Havertz. Mm. How do you feel now? I feel, I feel, <laughs> I feel better about him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I think, yeah, absolutely. You've got to give credit where credit's due. And I think that's seven Premier League goals right now for Kai Havertz. It's eight now. Eight in the Premier League. We saw it in the highlight that he's got, he's directly helped them win against Brentford twice with winning goals. And not only him, Kai Havertz, and what I've said recently about him, I like the way that he's kind of working really hard. He's making, he's making himself very difficult to pick up and he's been aggressive, but the goals are coming. And that's, that's well done. Like that, Now we're talking about this $83 million. And if he keeps scoring the goals like that, maybe not as, as prolifically as others, mm. but that, that's a big deal. And, and the other thing I would say about that is, and this goes back to credit to Mikel Arteta, he picked Kai Havertz, and there's many, including myself, that, ooh, a lot of money for a guy that didn't do great at Chelsea. He's playing him as a number nine, nobody else. And, cut, and uh, the other uh, big performance was Declan Rice. Another Mikel Arteta decision, Jorginho's going to play because I want Jorginho there, because I want Declan Rice with the ability to get into the box. Those two decisions right now are looking pretty good. The big thing for me with Kai Havertz is, you, it, it doesn't matter how many goals you score against Sheffield United, it's big moments like this, when you've got to score a winner, when you've got to step up to the plate and change things for your team. Can you do that? He's shown in it, just the two clips that we've show, shown him in there. Against Brentford, when it's needed, late on in the game, getting in advanced positions, making sure that you're trying to affect the game. A lot of people shy away from things and they almost go rely on someone else. Go to Odegaard, go to Saka, go to one, one of the other players. He's not shirked that responsibility at all. Big thumbs yeah, up. Mm. 2024 has been pretty easy for Arsenal so far. In a funny way, do you think they needed that test today? To a certain degree, I think they did, yeah. Um, to see where they are in the changing room from last year. This is the part of the season now, with 10 games to go, 11 games to go, where there's huge pressure. We're all talking about the game tomorrow. We're all talking about what Arsenal could potentially do leading into that game. That's massive pressure to play under. Can you play under that pressure? The biggest thing I took out of today is when, when you watch Liverpool, City and Arsenal, they have to be patient. And there was a great deal of patience today with Arsenal. They could have rushed things. I agree with what Graham says there. There is a bit of emotion that needs to come out of it. 
but emotion's good as well. Mm. It's how you balance that. Yeah. And that's the tough part, I isn't I'll it? just come back at that because I, I, I'm a little bit more like Graham. The emotional part of it, you need a little bit of that. But my note I wrote down was second half Arsenal, a bit panicky. Just a little bit panicky. Like, and it's really hard, isn't it? When you've got the experience of Man City when they go behind, it's exactly the same. Yeah. And they find a way through. And we just sort we sat here and we're thinking, oh, I'm not sure Arsenal are going to get back into this. But so the emotional side of it is really tricky to be, not to be too emotional, but kind of keep playing the same way. And back on the emotion that I did like was the defenders. I mean, Gabriel and, and Saliba. I mean, Gabriel was like a man possessed. Really strong, really aggressive, high fives and all that. And Ben White came over. There's a real sense of fight there. And I, I think you've got to love that if you're an Arsenal fan. Of like, this is the point last year where we started to falter. We're not going to do it again. So that's such an important three points in a very different way. They're not going to win every game by four or five goals. Stephen, I think Tim said this last week. At this stage of the season, when there's three teams in it, whoever plays first, it's almost more pressure on them to get that victory. I mean, the relief in that dressing room right now must be palpable. Yeah, to a certain degree, I understand that. But then there's a, a, an added pressure to the teams tomorrow now, knowing that Arsenal have won eight, eight games since they're coming back from mm -hmm. the, the international break or the, the winter break when they went away. And that puts a pressure now on those teams. I think it actually gives you an advantage. I think if you back yourself in those first games, you can put huge pressure on the other two teams then. And that's difficult for, to play in that pressure. Well, it's always good to us to remind you of these three teams and where they stand in terms of their upcoming fixtures. So next for Arsenal is Manchester City, but not for a while. They've got a big break away at Man City, March the 31st. Luton at home on April the 3rd, away at Brighton, then home to Villa. This is just their next five. For Liverpool at City tomorrow, then it's Brighton and Sheffield United at home. Then they go to Manchester United on April 7th, FanFest weekend. Then it's home to Palace in mid-April. And for Manchester City, after tomorrow's game at Anfield, they have that match at home to Arsenal. How about that for a couple of fixtures? Then it's home to Villa, who are flying high in fourth position as well. Away to Palace on FanFest weekend and home to Luton on April the 13th. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.